In this episode of Bigfoot, Maria and Ronnie are still actively pursuing the mysterious creature near Alpine Lake in Alaska. Both have faced bizarre encounters so far, and they are sure that they are close to finding answers. Maria is watching the lake with a thermal camera when she sees something horrifying. She instantly calls the command center and warns Ronnie about what might be lurking around. While mapping the lake, Maria sees the thermal signature of a creature just lurking above the water. She keeps her eyes on the signature and calls Ronnie to warn him since he is 100 yards away. Suddenly, Maria loses focus for a moment and when she looks back into the water, the creature has disappeared. Ronnie is not shocked by the report since he has heard a strange howling sound. Ronnie knows that the creature in the water might be evidence of what they have been looking for. He suspects that the creature is the Kushtaka, a legendary creature whose sightings have been reported far and wide by the locals. The Kushtaka was believed to be a creature that could control men's minds and possess them to do their bidding. Since the locals have spotted Kushtakas jumping on boats and walking in and out of the waters on the shorelines, Ronnie is positive that Maria's heat signature was one of the creatures. Maria cautions Ronnie to be careful, since they have no idea where the creature is or what its intentions are. Elsewhere, Russell is investigating the shoreline, which is rumored to have plenty of strange occurrences. He continues investigating while following strange tracks believed to be the creatures. He sees several trees cut at weird angles, meaning that something very huge must have cut across the trees on its way. Russell finally makes it to a small clearing by the water. He finds large paw prints on the beach and speculates that they belong to an animal bigger than an ordinary wolf. He can see the shoreline very clearly, and he feels that this is the spot where everything needs to be set in place. The abundance of food by the shoreline makes Russell deduce that animals come by to feed and drink water. This means that predators are also around looking to hunt. Russell sets up his equipment, including thermal imagers. He knows that if anything moves on the shoreline, he will see a heat signature and trace the object. He is quite confident that this is the day when his work bears effort. The night passes by, but suddenly Russell hears a loud, startling sound. He looks into his phone and sees the signature of something moving by the shoreline. He cannot believe it, but further investigation proves that something is indeed lurking in the trees just behind the shoreline. Russell is around 200 yards from where he has seen the thermal signature, so he intends to make his way toward the location. He knows this might not be a good idea, but he is determined to find answers. On the way, he stumbles upon broken trees and suspects that was the noise he heard earlier. The following morning, Ronnie links up with Maria, and the two call Bryce to inform him of everything that they have found out. Maria mentions the strange white hair they had found hanging on a tree in the previous episode, and the thermal signature in the water. Bryce has heard of white Bigfoots, so he says that he will have the hair examined. Now, he has learned that the locals know of a place believed to hold cultural significance to Bigfoot. Bigfoots are believed to communicate using tree structures to pass messages or mark territories. Bryce wants Maria and Ronnie to head out to the suspected location, since it could help them gather more evidence regarding Bigfoot. Bryce believes that if the new location indeed holds cultural importance to Bigfoot, then there is a high chance that the team will unearth more answers in their hunt for Bigfoot. The two will be joined by Pete Kelsey, whose LiDAR technology had helped the team in the previous season capture a ghost of Bigfoot. The team quickly makes its way to the designated location where Kelsey will help map out the area better for them. The first thing they see is a huge, upside-down tree. The tree is in line with another tree, making them deduce that they were placed by the same creature. Before they can make any more theories, Maria notices that the tree doesn't have any sign of human tampering. Kelsey says that his LiDAR technology will help them determine whether the upside-down tree has been tampered with. They all get down to business, and soon, Kelsey starts mapping the tree. He is also sending out a drone to map over 1,000 acres of land and see if anything stands out. To their horror and excitement, the team sees what appears to be a trail of upside-down trees. However, Kelsey warns them that he cannot for sure say that the trees are upside-down since the LiDAR picks up dead trees. The only way to be sure is for Maria and Ronnie to see the trees themselves. Meanwhile, Russell is still walking toward the location where he had spotted a thermal signature the night before. He is careful in his walk as he wants to have the element of surprise. However, he is getting quite frustrated with his new cameraman. 
He knows that they have to work as a team in order to take care of each other and avoid spooking the creature. Russell hears a strange noise and asks his cameraman to stay close. However, Russell finds that the cameraman has fallen behind. He reprimands him, asking him to be careful as he should not be a liability in such a dangerous area. On the other hand, Bryce feels the need to dig deeper into the information Maria had given him regarding the shoreline. He seeks out a local who had a strange encounter on the lake that could possibly explain what Maria saw. Bryce is welcomed by the local, Doug, and after exchanging pleasantries, they get right down to business. The man explains that he and his family, along with other families, had been camping at the lake. They were having a wonderful time and, after eating s'mores, the kids slept, leaving the adults to continue chatting. A while later, Doug heard a low, guttural sound coming from the tree line. This was followed by stomping and then movements. It felt like something heavy was running toward the lake and it jumped in the water. No one ever saw the mysterious creature, but Doug could feel the hair on his neck stand a little bit. Doug continues to narrate how the creature would run up and down into the lake three times. However, what was strange was that it appeared as if the creature was not alone. Doug explains how he could hear two voices as if two creatures were communicating. He believes that the high-pitched noise belonged to a female, while the lower one was a male. Doug says that the creatures raised their voices and then left. This information horrifies Bryce as he realizes that he must be dealing with a very intelligent creature. Doug confirms this and mentions that the area where they had their encounter is a hotbed of Bigfoot activity and weird things happen there. This scares Bryce who has part of his team down in that area. He is worried about what might happen. He also knows that dealing with intelligent creatures is so dangerous since they can walk right into the creature's trap. An intelligent creature might prove more dangerous, and Bryce hopes that his team realizes what they are dealing with. As the night crawls in, Russell continues walking stealthily to avoid spooking the creature. At this point, he believes he is almost catching up with the creature. He finds fresh marks on the ground, observing how the soil appears to have been thrown around. Suddenly, a tree falls just a few meters from him. This scares him and his cameraman so much that they have to duck for cover. Once everything is calm, the ever-adventurous Russell runs toward the tree to examine it. He finds that the bark is still fresh, meaning that the tree has not fallen from being rotten. He continues examining the tree and discovers that the tree must have been pushed for it to have fallen in such a way. He looks up at the canopy and confirms that it is windless. This new discovery leaves him both excited at the prospect of making a new discovery and worried at what this new discovery entails. Elsewhere, Ronnie and Maria have split up so they can cover more ground in their hunt for the upside-down trees. The locals believe that the trees hold a significant cultural meaning to the creatures in the forest. Maria is walking toward two suspected targets and she knows how important it is to be cautious, since this is a dangerous area. Ronnie will cover the third location and hopefully, the two will find what they need. Ronnie is making his way through the dense trees, hoping that with every step, he draws closer to the truth. Ronnie explains that such upside-down trees have been spotted in forests all over North America. However, it is still not evident how these trees came into existence. Kelsey had mentioned that there appeared to be no mechanical interference on the trees, meaning that humans did not interfere with the upside-down trees. However, Maria is not so convinced about this and intends to find out the upside-down trees mystery. Maria knows that she cannot dismiss the fact that people could have planted those trees. She is determined to find out the truth. Soon, she spots the first tree and assumes that its position is what made it to be identified as an upside-down tree. Since this one is not upside-down, Maria decides to move to the second one. Ronnie explains that the area they are in is believed by locals to be the Bigfoot area. The locals believe that Bigfoot or Kushtaka have a special part of the forest where they inhabit so the locals stay away from such areas. Doug explains that in that area, so many strange things have happened, highlighting the need to be cautious. He gives a story of school kids who had gone camping out there. However, huge rocks were thrown at them, clearly insinuating that they weren't needed there. Doug ends his narration by asking Bryce and his team to be careful. He has heard stories that the Kushtaka are shapeshifters and they take the form of people close to you. He asks Bryce not to follow anyone in the woods who isn't supposed to be there. Maria continues on to the next target, but she soon realizes that it's another dead end. The trees in the area form some sort of canopy that could be mistaken for an upside-down tree. Suddenly, she hears noises and feels as if something is moving in the woods. 
Maria looked around and found evidence that something had passed through the woods. She follows the tracks, watching with her thermal camera, but she doesn't pick any heat signature. Maria explains that her mind is on high alert not only for Bigfoot but for bears and wolves as they are plenty in the forest. Similar to Maria, Ronnie isn't having much luck at his location. Suddenly, he turns around, and what he sees shocks him to his very core. There's an upside-down tree right before him. As he examines the tree, he concludes that they now have evidence of more than two upside-down trees, meaning that there probably is a pattern. He knows that this area might be a key component in giving them the answers that they've been looking for. He excitedly reports to Morea what he has just found. Back at the command center, Bryce finds that the results of the hair sample Morea had found are out. He explains that the lab responsible for conducting the DNA testing often works with the police department, so its results are accurate and reliable. The lab specializes in mitochondrial DNA, which tests the smaller DNA found in hairs and helps identify the animal species. Bryce calls the project manager, Gloria, to ask more about the results. She explains that the samples were good and the hair was white. The narrator explains how in 2015 there had been a Yeti expedition where various hairs had been analyzed and proven to be Yetis. Gloria explains how the testing works to Bryce. First, they check if the hair sample matches a human being, and then they proceed to other animal species. In this case, Gloria excitedly reports that they found no species on their vast database matching the hairs. There might be reasons for it, so they will continue testing the hair, but so far, no animal matches the hair. This is intriguing, since Bryce feels that they are now close to finding what they've been looking for in Alaska. Back in the target area, Russell finally makes it to the location he had seen the creature in. He is very careful and walks slowly since he can feel that he is drawing closer to finding the creature. Ronnie looks around and sees a half-eaten skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbages are a type of vegetable with a bad smell, and it appears like the creature Russell had been following is fond of these. He notices that there are so many of the skunk cabbages around, and it appears as if something was just feeding on them. Russell wants to follow the food and see where that takes him. He believes that the creature they had been following was just at the location and it couldn't have gotten far. Sadly, the area is quite wet, so Russell cannot set down his materials and investigate with thermal cameras. However, he observes what appears to be handprints on the ground, explaining how it looks like something was trying to dig out a skunk cabbage. Suddenly, Russell hears flowing water and walks toward the sound, closely finding a small waterfall. Russell is excited as he explains that this place is perfect for Bigfoot. It has water and food and is secluded. Russell then spots a cave which heightens his curiosity. He has seen such a cave before, but this time he feels drawn to it. He feels that this would be a perfect hiding spot and suspects that the creature was hiding inside. Russell explains that if whatever they have been chasing all day and night is in the cave, he is about to have a meeting with it. He walks toward the cave, ignoring any sense of danger. That has been the episode Bigfoot Demon in the Dark. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for such amazing mysteries. See you in the next video.